The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com Zoom. Welcome to this week's episode. As you can tell, we are not in Colorado in the studio. We are actually on the Prevo bus uh, up near Port Angeles, Washington, uh, near Olympic National Park. We come up here for our summers. Um, some of our grandkids live up here, so it's an opportunity for us to spend time. However, it's also, I work from the bus. For those of you who are new listeners, you may not be aware, but my wife and I travel um, around the country in a 45-foot uh, entertainer bus. If you want to see more about the bus, there's a bunch of photographs and videos that I've done um, on it. The next time the bus will be available for public tour, if you want to see it, is the week of September 21st in Atlanta, Georgia. It will actually be on the floor at the Atlanta Convention Center for Tech Expo. The week of you know, the bus actually gets there like on the 19th, I think. I think the show technically opens on the 22nd. And it'll be basically Tuesday through Thursday um, on the show floor there in Atlanta. And the bus is open in between the times I'm interviewing guests on the bus. The, uh, the bus is open for tours. I think in the, at the Denver show last October, we had something like 650 people show up to take wanting to see the inside of the bus so feel free to come out tech expo september 22nd in atlanta georgia and uh we'll see uh, maybe I'll, I'll see if i can't get some discount codes or something if you're not um, in the broadband industry you just want to come on um and see uh, the bus or maybe we can set up a time before or after the show for those who want to see the bus so the bus is a 45-foot Prevo Entertainer bus. It has my recording studio built into it. I can stream. We have high performance, the, the supersized um, antenna for Starlink on the roof. So we get about 250 megabits down and about 30, 35 megabits up at 80 miles an hour as we're going down the road because it is certified for in-motion um, coverage, which is great. Um, makes it so I have a platform to do Zoom calls and meetings and all that for wherever I'm at. As you can see behind me from the view, that is not a virtual display. That is actually the water, and you can actually see right there. Uh, that's Canada <laughs> on the other side of the sound. Um, so this week I'm answering another question from a listener. Last week's episode was on what was the best advice ever received in my career, and I shared uh, my answer to that. If you haven't seen it, hop on over, watch that video. As you can imagine, the obvious next question that I was gonna get was, okay, so what's the worst advice you've ever gotten in your entire career? And I would have to tell you, the by far the worst advice, and it comes from not just any one person, but it's, it's repeated many times, it's repeated um, in, um, in the press and in the media, it is about, um, you know, pick your, pick your career based on the money you're going to earn. If you want to earn a lot of money, become a doctor, become a, um, a lawyer, you know, whatever. Um, but choose your career purely based on money. Now, I am, you know, and I would have to say early in my career, um, you're constantly looking for Who's going to offer you more money? And you flip jobs in order to try to get that next big bump in your pay. And that's your sole, sole, sole choice about where you choose to go for your next position. 
And I learned over the years that that is not the way to make the selection. That is not what to pick your career um, is on. It's purely on money. At the flip side, though, you can't just totally say, well, I'm going to pick only what I find interesting. Um, you may find something really interesting, but you have no way to provide for yourself, your family, or anything else. So it's a little bit of a, of a mushing together of what am I interested in that can also support myself, my family, um, and things that are going to have um, opportunities in the future. Look, things are changing. The skill sets that younger the younger generation coming into the professional workforce now, the skill sets you they need to have now is distinctly different from the skill sets that I needed to have when I was first starting my career um, as a software engineer and then eventually uh, to move in exec into executive technical roles in a variety of organizations. So the skill sets have changed. Things are moving at such a, a fast pace. So finding something that you are both interested in, but that you can um, provide for yourself, provide for your family, and that you're willing to commit to and to the changes that are happening. You know, there's a lot of wringing of hands and people saying, oh my gosh, you know, AI is going to replace me. I'm not going to have a job. No, it's, 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 I've heard recently someone said, I can't remember who, who, I, who I'm quoting. If I'm quoting you, send, put, put a comment down below. Apologize. Or if you know who I quote from, because I can't remember the name. But the point is, is someone has said, it's not that AI will replace you. It is the person who uses AI will replace you. So th think of it, innovation, think of the change, think of technologies, think, think of the things that are uh, being pushed up in, on an accelerated basis into our lives, not as the enemy, but figuring out how do you embrace it. You know, I went through this when I was young and got was originally a software engineer on personal computers, and I mentioned this in uh, the previous video. Um, and I was bringing something in that nobody knew about, having a PC on your desk. This is the early 80s. Oh, my gosh, it was mind-blowing. My father and my father-in-law both were in the steel industry, in heavy manufacturing industry, you know, and, and um, they were at an age in their early, mid, late 50s at that time um, trying to figure out what all this computer stuff coming on was going to be and how was it going to change their job. Guess what? The new generation now is dealing with, oh my gosh, you know, for me at my age, you know, what's the role of AI? How do I embrace it? How do I take advantage of it? How do I learn about it? Find that career that you can learn from. Do not get focused on chasing the dollar. Now, I've talked about this in some previous episodes. You can go find it. But I have kind of a criteria that I think about when I'm selecting what is it I find interesting or how I prioritize my decision-making criteria of what I select to do and what I select to commit my resources to. And it's what I call the five Fs. The five Fs are faith, family, friends, fitness, finances. What I have found over my career is putting finances at the end, the fifth slot, and choosing the first four as part of my criteria of where I focus my time on, the finances take care of itself. When I try to move finances to be the number one item or even the top two items, things just get screwed up. You just lose out, you lose your priorities. You tend to de emphasize things like your family. You uh, don't um, really find yourself and what the role of faith is in your life, whatever that faith is. I am a firm believer that the, the, the right criteria is faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. And the two that I screw up on the most is fitness and finances. Fitness from the standpoint of things that I inherited from uh, my family. Uh, I've talked about in the past, I had uh, quadruple bypass, um, a year and a half ago at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. Phenomenal facility has transformed my life, but 
I made some choices on my health. I'm down 35 pounds, have been since the surgery, and feeling orders of magnitude uh, better than I did going into the surgery. And then finances, focusing on the money. And in fact, the one thing I point out to people is after I got to the point where I recognized that finances were not, um, you know, let your work speak for itself. Don't focus on, uh, you know, going out to auction your skill sets out kind of an approach. In fact, in my career, ever since, so probably after the first three or four jobs, when I finally figured that out, I never negotiated my salary. I never went into job offers. If the job offer wasn't interesting, I would just say no and walk away. There was never a back and forth. It wasn't me trying to argue somebody that I was worth X, pay me that X. You know, if I thought the job was interesting, it advanced my vision or the steps I needed to take to build out my T-shaped skills ability, which I talked about in the previous video. Check that out if you haven't heard about uh, T-shaped skills. Then I, would, then I would take the job, and in one case, I took a 30% pay cut in order to go to a company in order to get the skills I needed. But those skills and that company got acquired by a big multinational, and it accelerated my career. What I have found is going into a job and committing to the, the value you can bring and the experience you're going to get, and then let your deliverable speak for itself. Then... I have always found the salary will follow. And so therefore, I've never, after like the three, first three, four jobs, I have never negotiated my salary. I've never gone in and said, I'm at, I need to get this much. You need to pay me this much. You need to pay me X percentage more than what I'm paying. No, never, ever do I negotiate salary. Never have. Um, I'm also a firm believer that if I have an employee come to me, who's been offered a job and they're trying to use that offer to negotiate a salary change, I don't do that. That's, you know, it, if, if you got a job, then you're, they're going to pay you more and that's what you're chasing. Or it's a job that you find interesting, then God bless, you know, go off, have, have that experience. And I cannot tell you how many what I call boomerang people go off, get that experience, two, three years, maybe they do a startup and entrepreneurship, and then they come back. And that's fine, too. Right, but don't use money. Don't chase the money for that role. So that is the worst advice I'd ever received. And to be quite honest, it started happening with my mother, who used to say, "You know, Phil, why don't you go work for a big, stable company that's going to pay you good money? Go work for IBM or whatever." When I was first in the job world, um, but it took me a little while to learn it. Hopefully. My lessons learned and my sharing it with you puts you on the right track to think differently about how you make those choices. Do not let finances drive your decision making. And remember, the five criteria that I have, faith, friends, family, fitness, finances, whatever that order is, but for me it is that faith, family, friends, fitness, finances, when I keep those priorities in the right order, everything takes care of itself. And that is the, the, the flip side of learning. Don't chase finances. Don't put finances as your top criteria. So as we wrap up, quick heads up. We are in Washington, as I said at the beginning of the video. We will be um, taking some time off. So I'm thinking I'll probably get an episode out about every other week rather than every week that we have for the rest of the year. Um, I'm also not a big fan of doing these big, you know, summer breaks. You see a lot of the the podcasts. We've we've only done that a few times when, like, my quadruple bypass or uh, things that happen from the outside. But we work hard to bring you original content um, on a regular schedule. But I'm just giving you a heads up. You know, with uh, having all five of my grandkids, um, and we're getting ready to take um, a trip with them that, uh, you know, just to give you a heads up, we are taking um, a Disney cruise coming up out of Vancouver here in a couple of weeks with the grandkids. I'm looking for really excited about that. Um, 
And I've got a uh, one of my granddaughters has, has her own YouTube channel and is now growing her YouTube channel. You know, she's all of nine years old, but she, yes, she's doing um, her own YouTube. So I'm helping her with that. So I'll be actually helping her shoot her videos and getting and helping her grow her channel um, while we're on the Disney cruise. So stay tuned. Um, I might put a link out or I'll post it on my social media if uh, you're interested in seeing what Juliet is uh, is doing. So with that, thank you very much. I really appreciate each and every one of you uh, taking the time to be part of this. Post your questions. If you've got questions that you would like for me to answer, post them in the comments below or you can hop on over to filmmckinney.com. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up like button. It helps with the algorithms. Um, and keep in mind, while we also we do the video, um, the audio version of this is the podcast over at Kill Renovations. You can subscribe on all of the normal uh, podcast sites. So if you're driving your car, you want to keep up with what's going on and what I'm thinking and career advice and innovation and creativity, etc. I'm also interested in hearing your thoughts, what you think the next series should be. We've done a six-part series on thinking. Uh, creative thinking um, we've done now uh, this will be the third part series um, on career career round innovation so I'm interested in hearing what your thoughts are with regards to uh, the next series of topics that you would be interested in. post them in the comments below or hop on over to filmmaking.com use the form there and drop me a note and let me know and with that thanks for taking the time from lovely Port Angeles, Washington, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005, this has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network. <laughs>